with me here is Lorinda. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm hyped for this event. It's looking like it's going to be a really strong event. Um, eight invitees and eight pretty powerful qualifiers as well that people will have heard of from around the internet, I think. Yeah, I think we've got a good mix of actually uh, some well-known players, some of the big names like Orange is over there, right? There's uh, Powder, Blackout, so some names that we've all heard about. Um, and then on the other hand, we've got some names that we've not uh, heard about quite as much. And this is uh, one of these plays is probably actually going to feature in the, the match we've got coming up. We uh, we are going to start with Vortex versus Maynard, and I I know a bit about Vortex and uh, Maynard a lot less so. But you've you've looked into these guys, right? Yeah. So Vortex won this event this time last year, and he also played th placed fir third or fourth in whichever way you look at losing semi finalist in summer. Uh, Maynard has been doing really well in the German um, ESL Pro Series. He's picked up over three and a half thousand there across seven events, some big hits, some smaller hits. Um, so he's actually doing well as well. Vortex picked up a lot of money over the last few months. And he's now on a team with Faramir, I believe, as well. Yeah, he's actually recently joined Vexed as the second member of the, uh, their Hearthstone squad. It's quite new, but seems to be promising so far. I mean, Vortex, he went uh, off the radar a little bit in terms of Hearthstone for a while, but, you know, he's come back and, uh, you know, he's probably going to try and want to prove himself in this tournament, actually. Uh, it looks yeah. like the guys are actually just getting ready to go. We're going to, no messing about, no messing about in this stream. We're just going to get straight to it. Just to let you guys know, um, Maynard has got Paladin, Warlock, Mage, and Warrior. And Vortex has Paladin, Mage, Druid, and Warrior. Both players banned Warrior. So, uh, you know, pretty interesting. Probably maybe a little bit afraid of, uh, of Patron there uh, in terms of the lineups they have. And it is actually best of five conquests. So these guys have uh, everything to uh, to go for here. Yeah, definitely interesting to see what happens there. Patron's been doing really well on ladder recently, and is definitely an incredibly powerful deck. Uh, interesting that Druid didn't get banned, so it used to be that you could read into someone's lineup as each class would just be one deck. But these days, when you see that Warlock is in someone's lineup, I mean, it can mean anything. There's so many things. Yeah, to do, so... and that's one of the worries, isn't it? It's like there's Reno. Some people are playing Handlock. There's like different variations of handlock in terms of demon many different variations of reno lock in terms of demon then there's all the zoo variations it's pretty crazy actually yeah um and again so there's that there's mage as well which can be freeze can be tempo can be mech and so not banning druid to me says that maybe these aren't as controlling as possibly they would be like but then you may just say well druid is going to get a win at some point i'll just try and get one win against it first because druid's a bit of a catch-all and with it not being last hero standing, it's not so important if you go one and one against a deck. Uh, whereas if it's last hero standing, obviously, then it's, it's a big difference. So, yeah, banning the patrons, they're the ones that are likely to go through. Yeah, and, and we actually do have stats. the game going now. So uh, it is going to be what looks to be Tempo Mage versus... Uh, tough to tell at the moment. It could be Handlock, it could be Reno Lock, I guess. Um, there is a Molten Giant in there, but Reno do play uh, Molten Giants now and again. Or it could just be straight up Handlock with a Dark Peddler, potentially. So, there's, um, you know, it's still a, a interesting to see what the Warlock actually pulls out here. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's hard for us to decide when we're actually seeing both hands. How hard is it for the players when they only see the cards that hit the table? And they have to assess really quickly what they think that's going to be. Yeah, and they start off with a Dark Peddler and uh, interesting choices. It's always a bit rough. Um, in, in terms of this matchup specifically because we talked about Warlock but on Mage, especially before any cards have been played on the Mage side you have to mulligan and play very differently whether it's Freeze Mage or Tempo Mage, the two most common archetypes so it's really difficult to make that Dark Peddler choice and be like oh, I just don't know what I need here but he did go with Soulfire and uh, Vortex is just going to drop a Scientist and this is really nice as well because going off the back of what I said like, he um it, you, st you know, Maynard still doesn't know which type of mage it is, and it's really rough to try and deal with this situation here. Although Imp Gang Boss on three, pretty safe. Yep, and we're just having a moment of technical difficulties, but yeah, um, both players still don't know what they're up against for sure, which is really interesting. Yeah, now um, that Vortex has dropped a Shredder though, and there is the okay, secret. Up, yeah. It's uh, you know, it, it's all uh, given away now. The secret is the mirror entity. And now uh, Maynard has to play a, a little bit a little bit safer, I guess. He's actually chosen to tap and not drop the Twilight Drake on turn 4, purely because he's afraid of Mirror Entity. Because if you give that mage a card or anything reasonable size like a Twilight Drake, you, you, you know, you're in some trouble. He's following up with yep. the Unstable Portal as well. And, wow, Mysterious Challenger for Mage. 
How many more secrets is he running? Vortex um, is playing the Tempo Mage, and it's... I don't know if you'd agree, Lorinda, but it's fairly common to see one Mirror Entity and one Counter Spell, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but, you know, we've seen some players play Duplicate as well, so we'll see if this uh, Challenger for three mana um, is, you know, going to pull anything else for Vortex here. Yeah, one of each is pretty common. Now, you do sometimes see Double Mirror, and of course, with this being a tournament, um, you may see somebody... There's no point mixing it up massively in a group stage because word gets out after one game what you're doing. So they won't try anything too tricky with the secrets. Um, we did see Life Coach, for instance, run Eye for an Eye as a secret in one event, but he only had to win two games with that deck. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we'll be seeing too many surprises in that way in this. <laughs> so we do see the challenger come down. Just to take a note, though, that Maynard actually got a really good mirror entity uh, target offering there. He just dropped a zombie chow. It's about as safe as it's going to get uh, from his warlock deck. And he is running double molten, so this could still be Reno. And he's just one of these guys that uh, seemingly doesn't get destroyed by RNG and just never draws the molten. Uh, the second mirror entities uh, come from the challenger, actually. So, interesting that Vortex has gone for two mirror entities and no counter spell whatsoever. Because it works in really, it's sort of like the ultimate mind games at the moment. Because Maynard now is like, well, a lot of decks run one of each. So, now do I have to mm -hmm. try and burn a spell? So, then, you know, or you can get best of both worlds here. Drop a Dark Peddler, pull a one-mana spell like Power Overwhelming, and if it was Counter Spell, he could easily just throw Power Overwhelming away to burn that Counter Spell and then carry on. But got a really good turn, getting the 2-2 two -two down and dropping Twilight Drake. He's under a little bit of pressure because there was a three-mana 6-6 six -six played last turn, um, and the Temple Mage's hand is still pretty damn full. But, uh, but you know, he's doing okay for now. Yeah, he has a handful of stuff that can deal with a lot of things. You've got to try and find time to get that Thorosan on the board to reduce all these costs. That won't be immediate because he does have to deal with like the immediate threat of the board, but as soon as he can get that Thorosan played, if he can do it reasonably safely, he'll be in a great position, I think. Yeah, he gains so much value from Thorosan, and you know, it's one of the cards we're going to continue to see, hopefully, you know, once standard format kicks in, as uh, again, one of the very solid legendaries today, and when the legendary count gets, you know, cut down a little bit in terms of cards like Lotheb, is it going to be, you know, used even more? But here, a Vortex is doing the, the Flame Waker Tempo Mage things, where it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll just drop down the Sorceress, the Flame Waker, and then do silly, silly things. Um, he's probably going to click, yeah, oh my, he even gets the one hit, so he can throw away the 1-1 one, one instead of the Dark Peddler 2-2, two, two. so that's looking pretty nice. Maynard under a lot of pressure, and so far, we do not see a Reno anywhere. The Double Molten Giant, though, if he can sort of try and ensure he survives one more turn, and the Siphon Soul onto the 6-6 six, six might be the way he does that. Yeah. Then Double that's... Molten is going to be pretty nice, especially now that he's drawn Defender of Argus. Yeah, that'll put him into a really good spot, and it'll play almost like a handlock at that point, which is kind of strange. Um, interesting to see the double molten giant. It's not a common choice. It was a common choice right at the start when Reno's was released. People were trying double molten, double peddler, yeah. and then then that went away. Then it came back, and then it sort of looked like it had gone for good. Oh, this um, is nice. So the soul fire going onto the two far as well. The flame wake is dying, and you know what? Dark bomb going away. Not the end of the world, actually. Um, it, if one of the Moltons went, he would be in some serious trouble, I think. Although Dark Bomb is nice to remove the Tempo Mage's smaller minions, everything else in his hand is pretty reasonable. Maybe, you know, BGH would have been okay to throw away, but you know t most Tempo Mages play Dr. Boom, so that's nice to just instant remove it. Yes, and from this side, uh, Maynard's going to... Is Vortex going to play around Molten to some degree here? Um, what you've got to think about now is with his hand, he only has Frostbolt as burst, right? So mm -hmm. there's probably no reason not to play around it. Four damage does changes nothing, you know, uh, uh, effectively change doesn't really change anything whatsoever. Dropping a scientist as a two-two, it makes you more weak to AOE because then that's all the minions you have dead potentially to say a Hellfire with a Mortal Coil or a Shadow Flame of some sort. I quite like this actually. He's playing safe both ways. He isn't pushing too hard with the Frostbolt. There's just no need because it's not setting up. You know, like it's doing nothing mm -hmm. he can't do next turn. Um, and he's actually keeping a minion in hand. Although we know there's no other secrets in the deck. If his board gets wiped, he can actually just follow up with a, you know, and and just play the uh, two-two as as a minion and just have some. Something on the board at least, and this is yeah, scary. Oh, very scary. Stuff, the Argus, 
I mean, the Thorison wouldn't have made much difference, but the Argus kind of hurts a little bit. And there's Dr. Boom. You've got to wonder what isn't in this deck. Um, yeah, I mean... Gosh. Yeah, it's a rough one. There's there's so many, like... Uh, in terms of the Warlock, do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's... there's this. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if this is more of the Demon variant with the Void Callers, purely because mm -hmm. of the Doom Guard. But, yeah, there's so much flex in a, like, a Reno-style deck that it's definitely hard to... Uh, deal. Oh, wow, are we going to see Molten, Molten? Oh, he can't really play uh, Malganis here. Um, um, three, no, he four, can't five, safely six. get it down. And losing that Defender of Argus is actually really important to him here. Yeah, this is rough. Uh, he actually even taps to uh, he taps to try and get what I imagine to be the Reno or the um, or the heal bot. Um, he has double Molten, but even the tap or now... Or or anything, yeah, that would have been... Oof. Just a way to protect these things. Uh, just losing that defender was unfortunate in the highest. He's going to really struggle to find yeah. a play here that doesn't lose. What, what's a shame for Maynard here, actually, is if he didn't tap, he wouldn't actually have just been dead unless the bombs, you know, did something. But with two A8s and the BGH on the board, you know, the likelihood of the bombs hitting the, the minions is actually, you know, fairly likely when you've got that much health and power on the board. But yeah. there we go. I mean, the Tempo Mage taking a pretty decisive win there. So Vortex goes 1-0 up, and his mage is gone. Um, he does have his Paladin and his Druid, which uh, two pretty staple classes at the moment. Yeah, and both are going to play in a similar fashion to the Tempo Mage, give or take. And so maybe that lock deck's going to be a bit of a problem, because Druid's pretty decent against it, and Paladin definitely has at least a 50 50 in my opinion i know you think that maybe the reno looks a slight favorite against yeah to, yeah to, to be honest like the more i've played it i think um the part like so secret paladin of course we're talking about mm -hmm. uh, it could be murlocs it could be other types but uh secret paladin is obviously the most common variant at the moment um and i think that it's like slight it's, it's very close i would probably just go with 50 50 to be honest because i'm happy to meet in the middle on that yeah because yeah, the, the the trick is the paladin needs to build up the board if the Warlock can hi have Reno and clear the board, then he wins, right? But if yep. you can't do both, you're in some serious trouble. Because you can Reno, but normally by the time you Reno on turn 6, the Paladin has the board and Mysterious Challenger down. And then they hit so hard that the extra health the Reno's given you, you're back to square one the next turn. And unless you have something like a, like a reduced down um, Twisting Nether or a big Shadow Flame with a heal, you're really going to struggle to actually get back. Yeah, and we do see actually this Tempo Mage here for Maynard as well, so obviously that's the, the tech of choice in um, Group B at least. So Yeah, there's been a lot yeah. of players actually laddering with Tempo Mage recently in the past few weeks. It seems to be, I think because uh, a lot of people are playing Druid, it seems to be really popular, um, and Tempo Mage actually stands up against uh, Secret Paladin fairly well because um, it can yes. clear the board quite easily in terms of uh, the Flame Waker mainly clearing up all the smaller minions and you still have things like Fireballs and uh, the Entities cause a problem because the Paladin wants to get the board and cards like Mirror Entity, Frostball, Arcane Blast, Arcane Missiles they all just basically battle for the board or clear your opponent's board so Tempo Mage, pretty good pick up here a um, little bit slow, I don't know whether I like it, this is a real tough one actually he's going to rack an Intellect to draw more cards a lot of people would either just drop the Scientist or the uh, Flame Waker just to try and get something on the board, but the Minibot kills the Scientist so easily. Yeah, and one of the things about this matchup is as long as you're you're not going to get completely beaten you know, to death rapidly by the Paladin, as long as you can plan it so you're ahead going into turn 6, um, and you can get that board sorted out by then, you may have taken 12, 15 damage, but if you're ahead going into turn 6, then the Mysterious Challenger loses a lot of his power, uh, maybe you've drawn a fireball by then to get rid of him as well. You get to manipulate the secrets better if you're on the board. And so maybe he just decides to take a time out there, get his hand filled up, and work out how he's going to plan about getting ahead by turn six um, rather than in immediate danger. Yeah, these are pretty awkward um, awkward hits from the Flame Waker, actually just creating more minions on the board and more room to play around with. Double Noble Sacrifice is definitely not what the uh, what Vortex wants to see. With those two and Tyrion, not the smoothest uh, curve once he dropped the Shredder there. But, um, but yeah, this is a tough one because on one hand, Vortex does have that board. 
And the Noble Sacrifice can do some work a little bit later on. But on the flip side of that, Maynard's actually got a pretty good hand to, to like follow up with himself. And is it, at the moment, he can get Dr. Boom down before his opponent gets his uh, bomb that he's got in his hand, which is Tyrion at the moment. Yeah, and Vortex has got a, a really difficult decision because he's facing a mage who hasn't done much, who has five cards in hand. And from his side, he's got to work out... No, we can see that actually the mage's hand is kind of... It's got a lot better now. It was kind of mediocre before that. But from Vortex's side, he can see fireballs and frostbolts. And, you know, he has to play around all these things. So he decided to go face there, which was a, a pretty safe play. And that's an amazing pickup. Yeah, 2-6, going to do some work. Unfortunately, he doesn't actually have any Battlecry minions. Like, he has Boom, I he's guess. Boom, yeah. But, <laughs> he but plays that... into Boom nicely on curve. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a long way away from that, I think, though, at the moment. Because you've got to say this board's going to get cleared up now with the Shredder. Another secret, and it's redemption. Oh, no. Vortex, yeah, Vortex is doing the secret piling thing that sometimes it happens where yeah, you don't draw how you want to draw. The thing was going to happen every time. That actually only happens once in a major tournament to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... What, what's... Yeah, this is the thing they wanted secret paladin to be punished by, which just doesn't happen that often, and it's pretty grim when it does. Yeah. He's getting a lot of damage in. This is going to be very tight. I really no, like this hold. For If he holds Redemption, this is... No, don't play it. Okay, so the reason I like the Redemption hold is if your opponent clears the board, you just play Redemption pass, then drop Tyrion. And then it's like, mm -hmm. what, what does your opponent do? Like, into, yeah, I just wonder if he's you... thinking... Maybe he's thinking he doesn't have time. Um, well, maybe he's thinking if he tops next boom or something next turn, what do I do? And yeah. Also, maybe he thinks it'll make Maynard make a mistake. And let's be honest, Plus... if he aims at the Shredder or the Minibot, he probably doesn't even need to get to Tyrion. Oh my yeah. god. And oh. even the 1-1 one, one oh, might one, be... Okay. It's, it's just one step closer to lethal. Because um, it's so close, he may have just weighed up that the 1-2 points of damage that he was going to get here are, are just worth more than holding the secret back. Yeah, the ping um, on the mini is going to be okay. Going to be really close. Um, not quite sure how Maynard will deal with Tyrion, though. Like, what? he hasn't got enough damage into the Paladin early to really have a good way to, to finish this off with direct damage or anything. Yeah, and Muster for Battle is actually one of the better cards Vortex could have drawn. Um, he isn't threatened on health. What he needs to do to close this game out is to pre just present too many threats for the mage to deal with, because the mage is on full health. A true silver champion ends this game, and with no taunts and the water elemental not on the board, there's nothing he can really do about that. But now the issue is, suddenly, like, Blessing of Kings like ends this game because he cannot clear the whole board he has to just play boom i think and just go for it because he either plays boom um actually can he clear it at all now that he's, he's attacked he, he can only kill he's just got to kill the shredder and hope for miracles i think uh so yeah he does he just has to oh oh the face isn't what he was after and that is going to be game unless this is a mystery either. ice block and it really isn't it was mirror entity and yep um, up to 2-0 it's going to be for Vortex in pretty convincing fashion to be fair and he's just going to have to win a game with Druid which Druid's the deck that you know people bring for Conquest in particular because it usually finds a way to win a game you bring it to Last Hero Standing as more of a coherent lineup but in Conquest you bring it just because it's kind of 50-50 against everything I know that's not quite right but it, it has a good chance of everything if it gets a good draw yeah and I think especially at the moment because there's so much ramp available in the druid deck and uh like you said everything's so consistent about it it's such a such you know like a steady deck to take just to be like i can take a game with this deck at some point in, in any series um i'd be surprised if maynard hasn't uh just locked in the mage again yeah he has okay yeah, straight to the mage, yeah, yeah straight in the mage and the, the reason for this and it's something that i would do uh, if i'm honest is so maynard needs to win with every single, you know, like with all of his classes. He, he has his uh, Warlock we saw earlier, his Mage, and uh, whatever his Paladin is. Yeah. So, I personally, and I don't know if this affects groups, which maybe it does in terms of score. I'll have to check on that. But you just want a win, right? You don't want to get 3 0 And yeah, um, I And agree. the Tempo Mage versus the Druid is actually such a favoured matchup for the Tempo Mage. Things have to go very, very wrong for you to lose this matchup. And uh, I would definitely just want this under my belt. So I, I like what my dad's doing here. Just lock in the hard counter, try and get a win, or get your best chance for a win at least, uh, and then go from there and try and build on the momentum. Vortex is a really yeah. interesting hand as well. Double Shade of Knack, so he can innovate Shade 
and then coin shade to follow up. But the problem is, if, if he does that and he doesn't draw into anything else early, what if Maynard's got, like, flame cannon? And, you know, you know yep. that's the scary thing with shades, isn't it? When you overcommit to it, not overcommit, but when you commit to a shade with a card like Innovate, and then flame cannon comes out turn two, it's like, uh, oh no, that was a two for one pretty hard, and it buffs the mana worm. And by waiting, it means that Boom and Azure Drake are going to get delayed. And it's really nice to get a turn two or three Azure Drake on the board, top your hand back up, get a 4-4 four, four down. So, really interesting decision there. Um, and like Maynard's say. really good at arcane missiling things, as he actually killed that <laughs> first shade uh, easily. The third hit hit the face, right? So it was just like, well, yeah. I've got this spare missile I'm not firing, I know, whack him in the face. Um, and again, this is the issue now with the Innovate. If he didn't do that play, yes, we wouldn't have seen the arcane missiles more than likely. But he could have like innovate coin Drake and then follow up with Nax, the shade of Naxxramas, and something like that. So the when you commit into a shade and it doesn't pay off, it's very very uh, expensive for the druid. And Maynard here as well making a really good play because he realizes that if you're going to coin out a shade on turn one, uh, so if you're going to innovate it on turn one. You've probably got another three or four drop lying yeah. around somewhere, so there's a really good time to drop your mirror entity there. Yeah. Now, uh, imagine if imagine if Maynard had flame cannon, Vortex would probably just concede. <laughs> <laughs> that would that be so upsetting. Oh wow, the actual so this matchup's really weird because although yes, you want the secrets from Mad Scientist, playing mirror entity against a druid when you're coming up to turn five and six for three mana isn't as much of a tempo loss as it is versus a lot of other classes. Because a lot of the time now, like, his shade doesn't contest the Druid of the Claw. He could fireball it, actually. But even, like, Mirror Entity, Unstable Portal, doesn't put him too far behind. Because you've seen both shades, and the Druid didn't play a Darnus' Aspirant or anything early on, which they could have done. So, like, he must only have big guys, right? Yep. And it's interesting he's chosen to go with a fireball. He, he thought briefly about playing the Conjurer, which would challenge, but... Something like a Wrath could have put him in a bad spot there, so he just decided to to play the one for one and carry on. Yeah. He knows that this shade is going to become like, pretty big. Pretty well, quickly. it's effectively unkillable now, isn't it? There's no yeah. way for the Druid to kill the shade until the shade reveals itself. And uh, this is looking really nice. Flame Waker, and here comes the Mirror Entity. And he is going to trade as well. This is really good. And it... assuming he wins this, he's got a really difficult decision to make. Because there may be, um, we don't know about the tiebreakers, but there may be the case that he wants to go to two all. But also he might not want to reveal his Paladin deck, knowing that he's got to play two other games in this group without that's, that. That's a really good point. On the flip side of taking the um, of taking the Tempo Maze just to get a win under your belt, like uh, on the other side of that, he will probably play Warlock next. Because why, why show your Paladin, right? Because everyone, any players that go to a tournament like this, which is closed group stage, within the first set... Like, you will know what everyone's playing, roughly. You know, like, not every card in the deck, but roughly. And once you know archetypes of classes that have multiple archetypes, like, the other guys in their group now will know they both play Tempo Mage, right? So you yeah. play in that, you know, in respect of that. And just create there may be a surprise that. card that was at the bottom of the deck. Exactly. But they know they're both playing Tempo Mage. They know at least 28, 29 of the cards. They know there's no counter spell in Vortex's deck. Um, and so on. Ooh, I like that pick. Regardless of whether it was the best pick or not, we, he just took Polymorph Ball, so I appreciate that as a card. <laughs> um, this is actually really good as well to um, to burst. As, you know, like you can attack with a minion and then Polymorph Ball it and attack again for effectively Huffer. Um, yeah, and to, it actually sets up lethal as well. I mean, it doesn't because he's going to get cleared, but it, it, it would have been lethal for the extra four damage if nothing had happened this turn. Which is always um, something that the top players are looking to do, is set up a lethal no matter how obscure. Just in case their opponent's whiff for one turn and it's all over. Yeah, and look at that, the draw straight into Savage Draw. Um, and even though that was more or less cleared, Maynard's feeling pretty good about this. He goes straight into Antonidas, mirror image. Vortex probably concedes, because there's no way you can deal with it. But yeah. when your opponent has to play Force of Nature, and that's it, to, to clear a board... You're feeling pretty good when you're in Maynard's spot now. But as I said earlier, the deck is so, you know, so favoured, the Tempo Mage. Things have to go absolutely terrible for him to lose this matchup. But he is going to take it. So he now goes 2-1 versus Vortex. Or 1-2, should I say. And that goes back to the turn one decision that he made, um, where he had the really tough decision whether to go for the double shade opening or whether to go for a bigger opening that 
would be slower. And obviously, knowing that he's not favoured, he decided to gamble and go for the the the, the quicker gambly opening, which makes sense. When you're not favoured, you might as well take risks. Yeah, as because the second that... they don't have the answer, suddenly, you know, you, you're ahead. And this is secret paladin from Maynard, so he is choosing to reveal his paladin deck. So, again, I'll have to check, but maybe score is important. And now yeah, he wants his second important. best deck against this, just to try and make it at least 2-2. Two -two. Um, but also what's interesting is Secret Paladin's another one of these decks where, although at its core everyone plays the same cards, there are some differences, and we did just see an Owl from Maynard as well. So that's probably, you know, going to be a bit of a surprise factor, because that is not a common pick in Secret Paladin. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do with Secret Paladin to make it better or worse against other decks, and things like adding an Owl could make you a lot more aggressive than you know, so Paladin is more board controlly than it looks a lot of the time. But if you add an Owl and maybe a Divine Favor, suddenly you've got a really aggressive Oof. deck. And when you top deck Wrath versus a 2-3 Keeper, um, that's pretty reasonable as well. Um, although somehow Maynard runs double Redemption, which is also not <laughs> common. A lot of the secret makeups are one Comp Spirit, two Avenge, two Noble Sacrifice, one Redemption, and potentially one Repentance if you want to push for a full mm -hmm. Christmas tree. Um, but two redemption again, like Vortex is probably sat thinking, right, there's redemption gone. Next, you know what I mean? And you know, exactly. right, there's one one secret off the board. Let's move on. Redemption won't happen on that challenger turn or earlier. Yeah, and I've been lucky enough to have played double redemption, so I can actually talk about this a little bit. Um, and I've played it because people don't play around the second one, and if you can get it down, even if they just sort of don't play around it into a mini bot, let alone a Tyrion or something important. You can just suddenly win a game, you know, if somebody's a bit lazy or, you know, and this might actually, it's going to be really good here, except you can't get it down because of the, the low theb, obviously. Yeah, it's going to be nice because this would be a good redemption, right? You either get the juggler back or the minibot back. And the, the follow up now from Vortex, innovating out the low theb's really nice. He's ahead on mana. He now drops down Keeper of the Grove to easily clean up the juggler. And the Keeper of the Grove being a 2 4 works really well versus Paladin because he. You know, those stat lines match up against a lot of Paladin minions in a positive way. And it normally two for ones, regardless of its hero, uh, its actual ability on hitting the board. Yeah, it's, it's pretty a pretty terrifying minion to face against when you've got a bunch of two twos and divine shields and one ones and stuff. Yeah, uh, but... It is going to get killed off here, and this redemption is going to be really useful as well, as this divine shield is just going to never go away by the feel of it. But he's running out of things, and you've got to think he's only playing one competitive spirit. He's got rid of two redemptions already. This mysterious challenger, it's going to be a beefy body, but it's not going to fetch much. Yeah, it's... um. Oh, Lotheb. Again, not not a super common card in, in Secret Paladin. A lot of decks don't run Lotheb. Um, but the, the Mysterious Challenger, as you said, isn't going to pull too many cards. We've seen both Redemptions gone. Uh, the com Probably the single competitive spirit is the one in his hand. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a bit tough. And he just has to just straight up tank four damage to face, which versus Druid, as the game goes on, you're getting very afraid of Savage Raw. Yeah, and I mean, he's going to have the Noble Sacrifice to protect himself a little bit as that minibot just comes back for the millionth time. <laughs> he will never die. <laughs> and he's going to get the board temporarily, but Swipe, Savage, Raw, Shredder are just likely going to mean the Druid can take this. One thing with the Druid, though, you do run out of steam in this matchup. You, yeah. If you don't fall over the finishing line, you do end up losing it. Yeah, the the benefit here for Vortex is that Maynard is in the the, the you know the the position against Druid. We all find ourselves most Druid games in where you think he he's probably got Savage Draw. I have to clear. He, and then <laughs> yep. the turn after when you've just about cleared, he plays some more minions, and he's like, he's probably got another, you know still got <laughs> Savage Draw. I have to clear. And that's where you start trading ineffectively, and why Druid is so powerful at the moment. You force so much pressure from such an early point in the game just by doing a little bit of damage and already Maynard is on combo damage he's on 14 health which although Vortex isn't quite on the 9 mana like th there is a get down I believe the yeah, Noble Sacrifice there is, yeah. is he, live he the, there was no surprise it was Noble Sacrifice Avenge that came off the challenger yeah. so like although Vortex knows he um, well to be fair if an innovate happened Maynard's dead if he had innovate combo so, you know, that's, Vortex... how, that's how much pressure the, the deck can put on and why it's so scary. 
And he knows there's no redemption because he's seen two. So he knows that he doesn't have to worry about the get down quite as much as you normally do because normally it comes back to life, puts more damage on the board, gets competitive spirited, blah, blah, blah. Um, he may struggle to work out what this secret is, though, with the competitive spirit being in hand. Yeah, Druid's always nice, though, because um, you have a very easy way to proc the get down. Because, like, well, if he just had the Shredder and no hero power that can attack, then the Shredder has to run into the 2-1, and you know that's happening, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and, yeah, this is just pretty brutal right now. And choosing to stick everything just onto that challenger... And I think he's probably expecting to proc a competitive spirit there, I'm not sure. But This this seems reasonable though, because he's leaving the 6-5 up, and it's sort of... The Shredder probably, you know, like, trades with the Challenger now. Yes. If you yeah, imagine the weapon was. didn't exist. And to a certain extent, like, the weapon is probably going to clear up what drops out. We'll find out now. Oh! Oh, wow. Oh. It's back on the other side. How, how does it feel, Paladin? How does it feel? <laughs> um, so like, and the problem with the weapon, I was going to say, is is that just lethal? Because of double, double savage draw, and he knows it's not get down. And druid things, guys. Um, so because of the weapon, he could have killed, say, a, a lesser minion than the mini bot. But he's taking damage, and as I said earlier, at any point, the druid can just kill you with savage draw. And there we oh, go, and that's going to be it. Druid doing druid things, and vortex is going to take this down three one. And he loves this event, his assembly. He, he just <laughs> keeps doing well here. Yeah, it's really nice, actually. I mean, Vortex... I mean, t to be honest, both players, I think, played pretty well. No <laughs> one particularly misplayed. I think the actual lineups were, were stacked against Maynard there. The um, the Druid... Uh, let's just open the lineups again. So Maynard yeah, took Tempo the... Yeah, ran into the lock, which is a pretty hard matchup for the Warlock, especially when you don't draw your... Your Reno and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, zero uh, heal, actually. He, he drew zero heal and then lost his Defender of Argus when he had two free Molten Giants because of the Doom Guard threw it away, right? So, like, that was rough. Um, and then going forward from that, the Paladin did Paladin things. I guess. And the Druid did Druid things. Yeah, and the Druid was a Druid. <laughs> so, uh, so there uh, we go. And both players banning Warrior. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, Banning Warrior because it can just run through lineups sometimes. Um, so against the Tempo Mage, I mean, Tempo Mage is pretty good against Warrior, I feel, but... Uh, you, th you think it's good versus Patron? Oh, versus Patron? Yeah, Patron runs through yeah. this lineup. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm thinking. Like, Patron yeah. probably does... I mean, it wrecks Vortex's yeah. lineup more than Maynard's because Maynard has the Warlock. Um, but in general, mm, like, Patron that, does pretty well. I, I'm one of those that thinks that Patron against Warlock is nowhere near the underdog that it gets billed for. I think that Patron gets Warlock might be 45%. Um, I've heard other people say maybe it's 30 but I think that's a bit low. Yeah. yeah uh, it's I think definitely Patron... rough. It's very very swingy though, isn't it, that matchup? Because it they, is. they it, either um... clear the board or you pressure them enough to, yeah, to you know, and they don't have Reno. Like, yeah, because there's ways, that, uh, depending on what Patron variant as well, the, the Corcoran Elites can pressure quite heavily. There's always the Grom answer, you know, for an extra burst. So it's really, really rough. But I do understand but the, the Warrior Bands from both players. But that is going to be it for that game. Vortex does take it. 3-1 versus Maynard. Uh, let me have a look if we know what the next game is going to be. It Ooh, looks, it looks oh, it. like we'll be casting Blackout's game. I'm not sure who he's going to play against. But we'll be casting a fellow Brit, which is always nice. Um, and one of Blackout's... Uh, so sort of, he doesn't really play in too many. I suppose there's not been too many tournaments recently, has there? Uh, in terms there's, there's of offline events. There's been a bit of a break over the last two months, in fairness. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, he, uh, does pretty well at the I series events, and you know, plays for Dignitas, so pretty, pretty I mean, good player. Blackout overall. is one of those people who, if you put him in a tournament with 15 bad players, he will win that tournament. <laughs> like he just does is, not. Is that lose. actually a compliment, Lorinda? <laughs> No, but, but if, he, you, he, if you, you put, put a good player in a tournament no, with bad players... Some, if you put all these good players in tournaments with sort of 15 mediocre legends, say, hmm. some of these players will lose a game that they shouldn't, but they're still maybe stronger players. But Blackout does not lose to inferior players. He just beats them. Yeah. Like, he, he just has the way of smashing up people. When I say bad players, I mean sort of, you know, mediocre legends, that sort of thing. Me, me, mean, like, me and you, basically. Players. Me and you. Yeah, me and you. He'll <laughs> smash up me and you. Like, but, um, and he just doesn't lose that. So things like Insomnia, before Insomnia got big, 
um, he would just go there and win it or come second to the other player in the tournament or something. Yeah, but. Second to Green Cheap, for example. But um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. he's uh, he's actually, I think, 39th he finished in the points rankings for the, the stand-ins for winter. So, yeah, um, he's, he's got enough points almost certainly to qualify. Um, there's one or two results to go on. Yeah. And he is only, he's almost he's certainly only safe by one right? point, but yeah. he, that's probably enough, yeah. And he'll be in the winter stuff, which... Are you doing EU or NA, or don't we know yet? I'm doing NA. So You're I'm, doing NA, yeah. so you won't get the... If I get to learn the NA scene. But anyway, guys, we're just going to go to a break while the next match set up. It should be, like, 15 minutes, maybe. Let me just check what the schedule says. Uh, oh, it might be, like, 15 minutes or so. I'll check. But, um, but yeah, guys, we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching. It won't be too long, hopefully.